Oh, hi. Hello. How are you? What's up, y'all? I am not Rhonda, but I'm live. I'm trying to, there we go. I'm trying to pull up the comments. So, yeah, Rhonda can't join us today. She is handling other things, but I am here. I'm Erica with Artist Till Death. Bam, Artist Till Death. And I'm going to show you guys a foiled marble. And because Rhonda loves her animal print, we're going to do cheetah marble. Bow, 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 bow. And so, huh? So I'm super excited about it. We did a pumpkin spice marble on my channel earlier today, Artist Till Death. And it turned out super cute. So if you get a chance later, go check it out. I would like to say thank you and hello to all you guys that are coming in and seeing what we're doing today, especially you mods. Thank you for all that you do. And my B, the camera guy extraordinaire, he's right there. And the director who is chasing cats. I'll show you the director when he comes back around. So let's get started. To start, we're using this adhesive. It's a foil adhesive from Artistic Painting Studio or APS. Uh, you can find a link on Rhonda's website to get the foil and the adhesive that we're going to be using today. I'm just going to use a foam brush and rough brush this adhesive on and hopefully not flick too much across my room. Yours was pretty straight last time. Yeah. Okay. Rhonda would get on to me about rainbowing. But I'll straighten these lines up. So with this particular kind of adhesive, it says on there that it takes an hour to dry enough to, to use it. But we're going to set it in front of a fan while we mix our colors. And it'll be the perfect amount of dry by the time we get going. This is just a cradle board that I painted black before the live. It's nothing special. But if you're interested in cradle boards, you can find them on our website, artistilldeck.com. P.S. We have big shipments coming in of paste and colors from our overseas stock list. So if you've been looking for some specific colors, they'll be coming in soon. So now I'm just making sure that all of the uh, adhesive is the same amount of white because that means it's going to dry at the same speed. If it is super white, that means it's thicker and it's going to take a little bit longer to dry. And when it goes completely clear, it's ready to go. So if you look at it right now, it has kind of a white hue to it. Yeah. Do you ship cradle boards to Canada? I will ship anywhere someone wants to pay for shipping. So I'm going to set that in front of the fan, and in a couple minutes, it's going to be good to go. In the meantime, we have went ahead and mixed up our stone coat art coat, best in the biz, for all the reasons. You can get this stuff from RK3 Design. She ships same day as long as you put your order in before noon. That was going to be dangerous. I'm not going to do that. I was about to mix on top of these cups because yeah. I'm a rebel and I like to party, I guess. You like to party. I heard it somewhere, I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna do all this with essentially two colors and a sparkle. Okay, so I went ahead and mixed up our one-to-one -one resin before the show started. Um, since this resin is a one-to-one, -one, that means equal parts A and B. You mix it for three minutes and then you have a cake. No, you don't, you have a resin. All right. So I want mostly clear with a little bit of sparkle and then a whole bunch of translucent white and then a little bit less, but still some of a little bit more opaque white. And I need some super opaque white and I'm gonna accent with gold because why not? And I have a little bit of color left over, 
So if I feel froggy and you guys agree, we'll add some aqua because what doesn't scream RK3 more than animal print, copper, and aqua? I can't think of one thing. Maybe horses? I don't know. What do you guys think? Where are you guys watching from? I need to know. Got eight thumbs up in here. 68 people. 68 people watching and only eight thumbs up. I'm offended. And I want to talk to a manager. Okay. So we're going to use Color Passion White for our this. I'm going to put like just a little bit of white. I'm going to put a little bit more, but still just a little bit of white. Just the tip. I'm going to put just a little bit more in the second one. I'm going to put I'm a little. I just want to leave it like that. Look how cool that looks. It looks like a cup that's like on its side. It's so much fun. I'm pay playing like magical cups right now because I put the white and what I wanted to be clear. So now this is going to be clear and I'm going to move it over there so I don't do the same mistake twice. And then I'm going to make my little cup of opaque white, super opaque by putting extra. St. Louis, Missouri in the house, Michigan. St. Peter's, Florida. Born in Texas, moved to D SD. So many of you guys from so many places. Okay, so this is our translucent white. You can see the color of the stir stick through it because we wanted it to be a translucent color. And this second one is even more translucent. And so, I think I want um, more of this. How come you're not Erica? How come I'm, I'm not Erica? How come you're not Rhonda and this is not RK3? So this is RK3, but I'm not Rhonda because Rhonda was not feeling well today. And so she messaged me like 12 minutes ago. Not really. She messaged me way before that and asked if I would do an ATD takeover on RK3's page. And so I said, yes, of course I would, because whatever you need, Rhonda. Okay, so we got translucent. That's translucent? Yeah, I guess so. That Other is. translucent. That's lighter translucent than that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, we just want three shades of white because we're gonna build our opacity and that's gonna build extra depth. And we also want to make sure we have an opaque white. So this one is super opaque. You cannot see through it. It's awesome. Okay. For our clear, I'm going to use some Shooting Star or Milky Way. And this stuff. What is this? This is Shooting Star. Yeah, but once upon a time it was called Milky Way and then she renamed it. But it's still the same awesome product. Okay. So while this looks chunky, it melts in to the resin so easily. I'm not going to use that much because this will make your clear not clear anymore. So you can see the particles now, but give me a moment and it will have melted in and look essentially like clear, but with a little bit of sparkly, sparkly in it. It's kind of like diamond dust, but the particles are a lot more fine and there's a slight hint of a rainbow-ish look to it. Diamond Shimmer is awesome as well. Okay, I'm going to hold this not aqua to the side, the naqua. Save for run aqua. Let me stir this bright gold up. This bright gold is by Just Resin. I believe I have some of it right now, but um, I'm getting another shipment 
from them. Hopefully my gold will be in there. Uh, like supposed to be here gold. tomorrow. So if you haven't used a paste before, they are different than a mica in that you can have them in a flat or in a metallic. They also melt in more easily so it doesn't leave you with those freckles or boogers or I don't know what it's called. I don't know what Rhonda calls them. When there's chunks of mica that don't melt into your resin, whatever you call that, this eliminates it because it's a paste. The particles are already fluid. So that's going to be our color palette. White, a little bit more opaque white, a little bit more opaque white, opaque white, Milky Way, tadpoles, that's what she calls them, gold, and possible aqua. All right, our this is complete. See how it is no longer a milky white color? Hey, what is that? This is a cradle board. What's on it? Why is it shiny? It is shiny in some places because if you weren't here and we started, you're tardy for the party. And we used a foil sizing on it, but we just brushed it, dry brushed it on so that we would have it. Rhonda, you're supposed to be taking a nap. Also, you make me nervous. Okay. So I have my Rhonda inspired foil. Rhonda 20. That's what we should call it. Rhonda 20. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of a crinkle in this. It's making my caps go crazy. But that's okay. And I'm going to pick a place to start the foils. It'll be fine. I'm going to use my squeegee. I don't know why it's called a squeegee, but it is. Vinyl squeegee. It's for vinyl. Because it squeegees out the air. Oh, because it squeegees out the air. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, you could also use a Bondo spreader, probably. This is just making sure that the foil is fully intact with your surface and your adhesive to pull it off of the backing that's actually on the front. Fun fact. All right. That area, there you go. I was like the guys that made the popcorn and don't eat the metal. You ready? Ooh. Oh, oh. Anyone else feeling like an animal? So I'm patch filling the rest of these areas because because it only comes in this size. That's all I had. If I had a whole full size, then I wouldn't have done it like this. That's what I had. That's what I'm working with. I will do it down here. I can jump in like a professional. Look at you being all professional. You kids and your resin all by yourself. I, too, can do it. Yes, you can. See that? If I can do it, anybody can do it. You just laid your this in some sticky. That's what she said. Oh. I don't know if Rhonda has Rhonda After, after Dark. dark. <laughs> like we do over at ATD. Now I'm just Going over one more time to make sure I have everything covered. All the sticky, ugh, oh, that hurt my ears. All the sticky covered because I'm not sure if the sticky would do anything to the resin. Like if it would make it fisheye anywhere. So I'm just, just making sure. Well, let's get that thumbs up. Ratio. Let's get the thumbs up. Up, up. Get your thumbs up, uppy uppy. 
We need that up. All right. Tink. Tink, tink. Rawr. Rawr. Sweepy said, I've been waiting on a bar top with foils E sample boards. So this is not a sample board for anybody in particular. However, if someone's out there that's interested in this design, you saw it here first. And we're for hire, so what's up? Okay, so I'm gonna take my abalone slash Milky Way mixture. Remember, it's just a little bit of Milky Way so that you can still see all the way through. You don't want any opacity whatsoever. You just want enough to get a little sparkle. And these patches are going to be where you can see through kind of like a window, peekaboo, if you will, of the foils that you've already done. So I would, wouldn't you try to put it where the majority of the, the print is and not try to put it, you know, just. So I'm trying to avoid having the large chunks that are, when I did the pumpkin spice piece earlier today, it was like window, 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 window. And I'm trying to avoid that. Gotcha. And I'm gonna tilt it some as well. You just, when you apply anything, especially on a countertop, something that someone's gonna look at every day, you wanna make sure that things aren't redundant, that they're not too even, because nothing in nature happens really evenly. That being said, I have not yet seen a marble that looks like this in nature either, but that's not to say that that's not out there. I've never it's not seen a, a cheetah with marble on it either, so. I haven't. I have never seen that. Okay, so I'm gonna use my translucence and I'm gonna fill in all the other dry spaces. I'm not gonna go over my clear windows to the cheetah print. And like we always say, depth of tone in a color will give you depth in your piece. So you can see on here the two different opacities that we have so far. And that's gonna give depth to the piece. I'm not gonna put all this down because I don't wanna overload my board. Maybe cheetah sitting on marble, I could see that. So now I'm going to just skim over everything and make sure there's no dry spots. The dark base of this and the translucency of the white that we have is going to show a lot of tonality, like you can see right here. You can see through the white and still see the cheetah print which is what we want. We want it to be a hint of see-through on the areas that we don't even have the clear. That's also gonna give you a lot of depth. You know how Rhonda always underpaints? This is doing the same thing. Now we're not mixing our two different whites together. We're just skimming across the top. You can use the Bondo spreader if you're um, more comfortable that way. I personally don't mind my hands getting sticky. Have with been, resin, with resin. Use, if you use the Bondo spreader, that's just going to collect it all, right? Well, the Bondo spreader, just you kind of lay it on and you kind of swipe with the Bondo spreader. You don't like s scoop it and scrape it. Gotcha. Once we have everything covered, we Kenny, can how am I doing with the with the videography? Is Kenny in too? I don't know. I mean, I, Rhonda could probably tell you she's the one that's um, more into the videography. I think. Um, I'm not going to worry about my size on this because this is not a sample piece for anybody. It'll be fine. So, Kenny, if you are watching. I don't want any text from you about mind your edges. All right. So I'm gonna take my tea tiny torch because our big one is out of juice. That's what I need to do tomorrow too. Fire. 
and I'm just popping the bubble so I can see what areas may have something floating in it, like this hair. I wonder whose long hair that is. Totally Bowie's hair. Definitely not mine. All right, we got all the bubbles popped. Now it doesn't look like much right now, but you guys just follow along with me because it's gonna look amazing. I'm just feathering these transitions right now. Just bringing a little bit of the white into the piece. This is just gonna help make things look more natural. We're gonna tilt it in a minute anyways. You don't ever wanna have a hard stop in your work, whether it's a countertop or a piece of artwork like this stop right here. Not a good look. Doesn't look natural. Not Doesn't that look cohesive. Not that cheetah marble looks. There's a cheetah right there. Look at that, mate. If you stand real close, you can see the, the spots of the cheetah walking by. <laughs> I don't think he thinks he's a cheetah. Uh, All right. So if you look close, I'm just bringing over some of the translucent. Can the foil burn easily when torching? Well, I don't think, I don't think that. It's not gonna reach the foil yeah. when you torch it. If you're torching enough for the foil to get burned under the resin, your, your problem is not gonna be burnt foil, it's gonna be scorched resin. Uh, Sh Shelly, I believe that was a Northern Australian Possibly. Shelly is from Southern. Australia. Southern so. Australian. Southern. Who knows? Southern. It's from the Blue Coast. Is that like where Bondi Beach is? Yeah, probably. Okay. So now we have this ghosty look over our marble. I'm going to now go in with some of our gold. Voila, voila. And I think I'm going to... Maybe do this. Hey, that was my least um, best Steve Irwin imitation I've ever. There she is again. Crikey. Crikey. If you get too close, she'll snap your finger right off. Dadgum, armadillo, crocodile cat. What, we're just surrounding it now? Well... I'm still gonna do some melding. Mm, changing it up, huh? I am changing it up. And I'm gonna go in with some opaque white. He's literally just waiting for the foil to come off the table. He loves gold leaf. He does love gold leaf. I know Rhonda's sitting at home just critiquing my awesome. So because the paste that we use are heavy, they're going to sink into the mica, nope, into the resin a little bit. And when we tilt it, you're going to be able to see the depth we've created from allowing it to sink just a little bit. Thank you, Nikki. Yeah, this would make... Such a, like a, like an amazing coffee table. I could see a bathroom or a coffee table for yeah. sure. If you guys let your eyes look, it literally looks like that's like two feet below the white. Like I'm letting my eyes just kind of relax and. You just blur your eyes a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it looks pretty crazy. Yeah, vanity for sure. Oh, getting creative over here, are we? I'm making this a full artistic look. So I'm just dragging my finger through some of the gold and wisping it out. Now, will this sell up or is this not selling agents? So it will. 
you just have to let um, you just have to let it set for a minute. Your resin to be thicker. What gold was that? This is just resin bright gold, and I have more that's supposed to be here tomorrow. This is one of the most opulent things I think I've ever done. Go like that. Put it into that white. That looks. This is looking really good. Everybody's loving it. Easily one of the most opulent things I've ever done. What is opulent? Um, anything Gucci. Like ornate, opulent. Ah. I see, I see. Man. Sometimes you just need to have a hint of gold in other places. Okay. Like you guys could see the table's just slightly off. So that's like moving. Like you could see it just kind of. It looks like it's dipping into the marble. The, yeah, where the translucent. That's what gives it that layered. Yeah, wow. So right here you can see Bougie. where the gold sunk to. And this is how far she's tilting that so y'all can see that. And she's hitting it with heat so it definitely helps. Anytime you have transparency and you let a color run over the other color, when you let a translucent run over your solid color, you can get this amazing shift. Look how this looks almost northern lightsy, where this area right here is where it sank, and this is the top layer, so it shifted this way. Same with all of this. Okay, let me just put my finger in it. All of that is a shift. Loving it. I'm just going to tilt it back just a little bit. It's already rolled over itself, so it's not going to really roll back over itself. So if you guys notice where she put the clear, and then she put that, that really transparent white, that's going to kind of stay where it's at. And anything that goes over that will just roll over that. So you're not... Basically, your clear is going to stay where your clear is at, and your, your transparent is going to stay where you put your transparent on the board. And anything over that is going to roll over itself mm -hmm. because there's resin down. Because we did sense? Because we did not do a grease the pan, we didn't do a skim coat, yeah. the resin is going to stick where it is and then stretch. If you were to do a skim coat or grease the pan, then it would roll over that first skim or grease layer. But since we didn't do that, everything that we put down is gonna hold and stretch whichever direction that we stretch it to. Okay, should we add some aqua in honor of Rhonda? I think you should maybe go blue, 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 blue. And then a blue, 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 blue. And Are we blue, talking blue. about aqua bloops? Yes. Okay. Blue, blue, bloops. Aqua bloops. I. I don't know if they could hear you. What it looks like from the other angle. I don't know if they could hear you since I was over there. Should we go with breakfast at Tiffany's or something darker? I would say breakfast at. It's a professional term. It's, it's official. Okay, so this aqua shade, this Tiffany color, is actually called Breakfast at Tiffany's. Watch Voila. You. Is he looking up? No. Go that way. So it looks like this. And it's actually called Breakfast at Tiffany's. It's made by Just Resin. Do the bloops, Erica. Do the bloops. I'll bloop it for you guys. Bloop, 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 bloop. Only for y'all, I'll bloop it. Hooray, Rondaqua bloops. All right. What in the world does grease the pan mean? Okay, so that um, hillbilly art, that's a phrase that my mama came up with when I first showed her how to do resin. 
I told her we had to put some down first so that the resin could flow over it easy. And she said, so it's kind of like we had to grease the pan. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Grease in the pan. So it's grease the pan. Yeah, breakfast at Tiffany's is probably almost everybody's first color. It's such a great color. Uh, I have some of these in-house, but I'll have more um, tomorrow, I hope. Rhonda said that could be a finish all on its own. But, but we're going to take it to the next step. Boop. <laughs> This boy cat is killing me. He's over here. What he's doing over here. Here, why don't you he play with this foil is never over here? here? Oh, he got film. He got foil. Yep, 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 yep. I like it. I like it. And how come you're starting outside of the piece? I forgot to tell you how come I am. So, I always start my lines off of the piece and I end off the piece because when you first start pouring a line out. It's going to blurp. You know what I mean? It's going to have that, that it's a pool. teardrop. It's a little pool. Yeah. It'll, it just blurps. It's be a pool of your color. And so to avoid that, you start off the piece, and so your blurp hits your surface okay. instead of your uh, piece. Can we do the heated and then go so that it kind of blurps out? It's not going to look right, but we can do it. Okay, I don't want to do it then. He's playing with the corner of this. Oh, my God. Okay. So, I'm loving it. What do you guys think? On mine, I did earlier, I had to put some granification on it. Don't know if this one is needed, but what do you guys think? Let's see why not. Give a little more texture. Are we going to see the famous Italian drip? If we do the granification, then I have to. Mind blown. Thanks, Steve. So, if you guys like what you're looking at, leave me some thumbs. Leave some positive comments down below so that um, Rhonda feels like it was a good idea to let me guest host on her channel. Very unique piece. Love it. Read it. The Italian dress. Okay, fine. Let me change my gloves. There's the director. Finally. Mm -hmm. Now that the... Uh, with your smoke break, mister? Now that this show's almost over, the director comes out. He's like, hang on. Is it for sale? All the things I ever paint are for sale. Because I got bills. And they do not accept artwork here at my apartment. So the answer is yes. So I need some of this. So in our artwork, generally, we do not use gloss spray paint because reasons. If you look at any of our pieces that don't have resin on it, they're matte. Um, so we actually went out and got gloss stuff just so that I could do this. Um, the Italian drip. I can never get my fingers spaced out right. I'm pretty sure that's why I can never do it. Mm. My painting. Okay, so where are we gonna? Where are we gonna fog? Where are we gonna fog? So Rhonda, I know you're watching, and all the other people that do this on a regular basis, I have yet to get this right. So don't judge me. This this is a learning space. You have to be supportive. I support all of you guys. So don't make fun of me too bad when I mess this up. Okay. Now, while this could be finished all on its own, we're gonna take it to the next step with some granification on our marble. And to do that, we're using Rust-Oleum Gloss White. Has to be gloss because the flat will just kind of get clumpy. Won't look good. 
So where are we gonna do this at? I think I'm liking this area, so I'm gonna leave this alone. I think I wanna do it right here. Yeah, maybe do like a... Like a fade in right blurb, here. Blurb. Maybe a little bit on this edge, this area. Yeah, right over there. And maybe a little bit maybe like a little right pop, here. Pop. Maybe a little... Blurp, burp, pop, pop. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna be using alcohol. We're gonna take our flame things and put them far, far away. Make sure your piece is as heated as you want it to be right now because... Did you heat? I did. When you put the gold, there's a lot of bubbles. I know, but I think it also may be trash because we have so many fans running. Yeah, that's hair and trash. We'll just get that. It'll buff out. It'll buff out on the flood coat. Okay, so now that we shook up our spray paint, when you use spray paint, make sure you're in a well-ventilated space. Use a respirator, listen to your body, refer to your doctor for things. And um, I'm not a physician, but I can tell you, take proper precaution for whatever it is that your body needs. Disclaimer over. Okay. So now I'm gonna just dust on some of this gloss white. I am so nervous. Yeah. It looks good. On the areas where I want it. Okay, it's traveling. Is that pretty high, y'all? I am up pretty you high. Know, you don't want to get too close or it'll be really thick. Yeah. Don't want it too thick. And you don't want to use too much alcohol. And there's all these rules. 109 people in here. What's up, everybody? Welcome. You guys just came to see my fail of an Italian drip. Okay, ready? I'm not ready. Stone okay, I'm ready. In the house. Hey, uh, seeing you guys twice. <laughs> I don't want to brag, but Stone Cape, they came into our live earlier today. Okay, so I'm going to first. Today or that was today. Okay, I'm going to start with a backup small drip situation. Okay? We're doing the, uh, what do you call it? The pumpkin. Oh, yeah, yeah that was yesterday. Yeah. Well, at least Stone Coat gets to see me use their brilliant products today, then. Okay. It's Luke. What's up, Luke? What's up, Luke? Okay. So I have the little drops, and now I have to Italian drip it. So you have to spray it into your hand. Splay your fingers. We do more. Why you got to... Bring up old stuff. And then Rhonda says you have to flick the residuals off your hand after. <gasps> no! Okay. Okay. It doesn't Big look that bad. And spritz. Oh, well, I got it backwards. Don't listen to me on the Italian drip part. I'm not mad at it, though. Even though this looks a little bit too regular for me, I'm gonna let the alcohol dissipate. You have to have restraint when you do the Italian drip because if you don't, you can add too much alcohol and it'll just get away from you and it won't be good. Thank you, Luke. This piece was inspired by my ace, Rhonda. Jay Bell said, leave it alone, you're ruining it. Okay, well my bad, Jay Bell. I'll leave it alone, my bad. Look y'all, it looks like this goes like this. Pew, underneath, pew, 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 above. <laughs> How funny is that? I just don't like that this looks like a four leaf clover, but I'm gonna leave it because it'll probably look great. What size cradle board are you using? Hillbilly Arts, this is a 16 by 20 cradle board. And what I mean by cradle board is that this is essentially a canvas, but without the canvas part, it's just a thin MDF on top of an LDF that has a dovetail uh, frame on the back so it's ready to hang. So all you art people, I mean counter dot people, take a hint from some art people and make your sample boards hangable so you can just display them when you have people come in and they want to see what pieces they may want to be inspired by um they said every time i see a new video i have to buy stuff every time i see a new video i have to buy stuff i'm buy sorry stuff need smaller spritzes 
you guys, I don't want to get in trouble. Okay. Yeah, that's what I say. Like, that's what the smaller stuff breaks it all up. Okay, watch your hand. Small spritz, small spritz, small spritz, small spritz. Sorry, y'all. All right. We don't want to add too much, though, because for real, I have put too much alcohol down, and it just does not look cute. I think this looks good. You can see the alcohol making those little raindrop looks in our Just Resin Bright Gold. So just like with the micas that you use, the alcohol will disperse the particles that are in paste as well. It's not Rondaqua color, but I'm getting it made. Fun fact, it's actually called Breakfast at Tiffany's and Oh, Rhonda said, pro tip, if you put your paint just a tad thicker, then spritz, it will fracture a little better. So I'm not going to get extra on this one because in my experience, every time I did spray paint, alcohol, spray paint, alcohol, it looks worse than the fur. Like, it just doesn't improve for me. But that's just me. So if you want to do that, you just have to let your alcohol dissipate, just evaporate off, and then you can add more spray paint and then do alcohol over. So you can tell if your alcohol is fully evaporated by looking at it at this on a side angle, letting some light hit it. And if there's a dip at all, then your alcohol is still on the surface. If it looks level, then your alcohol is evaporated and you can proceed to the next step or the next layer. Well, thank you, Amy. Luke says you can tell if it's fully evaporated pretty quick with a torch. <laughs> okay, so while that is very accurate, you can tell because uh, alcohol, especially 91%, which is what we recommend using, catches on fire super easy. Um, we just always move the torches away from where we're working if we're using alcohol on the surface because we have um, set things on fire before on accident. So, um, I like your honesty. Well, thank you, J-Bell. That is kind of a trademark of our channel. We own our mistakes. We own when we're not an expert at something and we always share everything that we know because we think art should be shared so that everybody can kind of grow on their own terms as an artist or as a countertopper. Is that what? Countertopper? We'll go with countertopper. Or artist. Somebody said they were from Kansas. First time scared the boop out of me. Uh, same. So, there we go. I think I'm going to leave it right here. I'm going to walk away, Rhonda, as myself. But um, I love this piece. I love using foils as a peekaboo under marble or granite or anything. You could have just done all foil and then done the granite look over it. It would have looked amazing. Of course, resin, then granite look. Um, that's a Scrabble word, right? So, thank you guys for coming in and seeing what we're up to today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were educated, entertained, or otherwise inspired to create something of your own, whether it's from what I did or something you saw in the background. Makes my heart happy. So, yeah. Um, so, what we say on our channel is, what are you doing? Oh, I thought you were going to say what we say on our channel. So what we say on our channel is um, be kind because you never know what someone's going through. Be kind to each other. Be kind thing. to everybody because you never know what someone's going through. You never know. You never know. And what Jeff says is always remember we do the that test. we do the test so you don't have to. But since we're on Rhonda's channel, I will say that don't be scared. Move forward and be creative. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye. I said bye.
Bye, y'all.